Boa tarde a todos. Eu espero que o coffee break que o coffee break que oferecemos tenha sido apreciado. E, e vamos iniciar agora este período com uh, um balanço, um, um panorama sobre uh, a vida independente na Europa, e com duas intervenções. Uh, vão intervir o Frank Sion, que é desde setembro de 2015 o Advocacy Officer da Rede Europeia de Vida Independente, da EMIL. Uh, trabalha para uma sociedade inclusiva e acessível, da qual todos os cidadãos possam participar plena e igualmente. Isto é um fundamental para o trabalho da EMIL. Frank faz nos um panorama da vida independente na Europa. Teremos também connosco o Camilo Goncourt, que é cofundador e presidente da iLiving, a primeira e única organização de vida independente na Grécia, e que desde 2018 trabalha como Development Officer para a Rede Europeia de Vida Independente, a EMIL. Representa ainda a EMIL Youth Network, no Comitê de Juventude European Disability Forum, sendo o presidente deste organismo. Eu não sei quem vai. Eh, entrar primeiro, se é o Frank ou não, mas agradecer então que o um meu atraso. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, so, está tudo bem? Olá, boa yes. tarde. Está tudo bom? Yes, yes, thank you. Hope you're all well as well. Thank you for having us here. We are very happy to, yeah, to see familiar faces and new faces and to participate in this great conference with all these great speakers for, from Adolf to Jamie to Kapka and to all of the other people who spoke all these days. It's really great to be part of this. You are doing a great job here. Uh, yeah, so yeah, as you said, I, my name is Kamil Gungor. I, I am originally from Poland. But I was born and I live in Greece, uh, where among others I am the chair of the Greek Independent Living Organization I live in, and I work for ENIL as ENIL's Development Officer. Uh, yeah, we are going to speak together with my colleague Frank, and it will be more like a dialogue with each other, not like uh, we will not speak separately, but we speak, we speak to each other in an innovative format. Please stop us if we speak too, speak, uh, too quick. And yeah, I pass the, the mic to, to Frank so he can introduce himself. Hi, um, hi everybody, and, and thanks uh, Camille for the, for the start. Um, and so, yes, um, my name is, is uh, Frank and I work for the European Network on Independent Living as advocacy officer and I'm from, uh, from Belgium. I'm, I live in Belgium, in Flanders, and I also uh, use uh, PA myself. So I will also speak from my own experience in, in that regard next to uh, what we do for, uh, for Enil. And with this, uh, with this um, intervention, Camille and me will also try to give you some uh, sight on the, on the different trends that we see in, in European countries, also based on a study that we recently did the independent living survey with our members of which many of you have uh, filled in the survey. So also uh, thank you for that. And as Camille said, we will do this in a, in a dialogue. So we will uh, try to be uh, very uh, interactive, but if we speak too, too, too fast or if you have any questions along the way, do not, do not hesitate uh, to ask. Um, so maybe Camille, I start this, uh, our conversation uh, with uh, the first uh, question, because I know in Greece, you are already working hard on this, uh, which is basically uh, how do you start PA and, and what is the role of, of disability activism? in this. Ah, the, the mute is still on. Um, so would it be possible to un unmute Camille maybe or to allow us both to un unmute yeah. ourselves? Thank yeah, <laughs> thanks. Great, great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, Frank, before that, maybe I can do a quick mm -hmm. joke. 
if you see now me and Frank next to each other, we have the Portuguese colors, green and red. This is only, this is, yeah, we didn't plan this. But yeah, if you believe in symbols or in, uh, in the faith, we kind of have the Portuguese colors today, which is fun. Yeah. So coming now to the, to the question, I am the importance of activism and, and the, yeah, in the movement. So the independent living movement everywhere started from the disabled people, from the down. You already heard this in the previous day and today, and we saw it in yesterday in Sweden, in Switzerland, in Bulgaria. It was the disabled people, I mean, in Bulgaria, not exactly the disabled people, but the idea is that everywhere, even from the USA, if you saw the creep camp, everything started from the disabled. There is never, never is the, the case that the government is coming to you and saying, hey, today I, I think it's the time to introduce the personal assistance or to take people out of the institution. This never happens. It's only we that start the process and we that fight in every country. And we have a lot of good examples in Europe when this happens. And yeah, and either it's already achieved something or we are trying to achieve something. For example, you, you see in Sweden, what the level of the, of the independent living and personal assistance, it's thanks to their fights. Uh, in the USA, it started from disabled people. Uh, you see in Slovenia, in Slovenia, which is one of the countries which is not promoted very well at the moment, but they have one of the best independent living and personal assistance systems in Europe. So, and it started also from the disability organizations and from the independent living movement, Slovenia. Uh, even, I mean, now you see yourselves in Portugal, it's thanks to the center, the, the, the Vida Independiente that something is moving. We see the same here in Greece. We didn't have any mention to independent living for yeah, never. And we started an organization, organization a few years ago. And this year, for the first time, we had a working group discussing uh, the personal assistance. I will tell more later in the discussion. We see also uh, the same cases in Lithuania, in, in Hungary, with, with innovative and different approaches. People are uh, very, today with the technology, people are having many new ideas. So we, there is not only the classical demonstrations, but there is social media activism. There is a lot of stuff that happens, but it's always from the disabled. Even the CRPD, uh, the United Nations Convention, is thanks to the disabled people. And yeah, I mean, in general, activism works the same. It's also the same for black people, for women, for LGBT. QI for the, yeah, for the environment. It's people who ask it for that. It never came by itself. But uh, after activism fights, you need a base. Some, you need something from the government. You need legislation. So Frank, what would you say it's important in legislation? Um, well, th thanks, Camille. I would say what is important in, in legislation is also what we have seen also in, in, in uh, presentations uh, before, but it's important to focus on the uh, control of the users. So to see PA really as a tool for independent living, which is under control of the user and gives the, the choice and is not just another offer from a from a service provider that or another uh, family um, care, you know, benefit that, that you get. So it should be a right that empowers users to choose. So the budget should be under the control of the user and sufficiently high. And in the independent living survey, we saw that in many, um, in many countries, this was not the, the case. So either it is not for the entire, you know, for the entire group, it's only for a specific subsection of disabled people. And the most, um, you know, telling example here is for instance, uh, Cyprus, who, you know, has this pilot for PA and according to the information we got for the independent living survey, it was only for uh, people with uh, specific um, impairment, which was tetraplegia. So only a very small, small subsection could access uh, PA. And at the same time, we see it in many places that PA is set up as a as a pilot project. So it is set up as a as a pilot either for a specific region and or a specific town or a specific group of people. And um, do you think, this, 
Oh, do sorry. you think the, do you think the pilot it's an it's a useful stuff? Yes, yes, but pilots can, can can be useful and they can be useful to like get the idea in in the in the society accepted to like launch the idea of PA. But uh, we see also in many of the independent living survey uh, responses that people stay stuck in the pilot. So, um, you know, for instance, th there can be a, a, a pilot for, for a long time. You mentioned Slo Slovenia, but here we see that the pilot project is already ongoing for, for 20 years. Um, in my country, in, in, in Belgium, in, in Flanders, we, we suffer from the same um, weakness. Uh, well, first of all, the, the PA project is only for, for Flanders, so it's not national. Uh, but again, it started from a pilot project and, and what the government is, is doing for all these years is expanding the pilot because it was not started as a, as a right for PA, it was started as an additional benefit. The pilot gets extended very slowly to more groups and more people, but it, only, it always starts from the you know, the background of being a project for some uh, based on scarce resources, not a, as a right. And um, so we, we see that, that, this, that this is a very, very much a problem if you stay too long in, in the pilot project, especially since the, the first reflex of, of governments, uh, and we saw it now with, with COVID, and we also see it in, in the independent living uh, monitor, uh, is still to, to invest in, in institutions. Um, not to uh, invest in, in personal assistance. Uh, while they all uh, signed the, the, the CRPD, um, this is still the, the first reflex. So um, to avoid that we create a PA for, for, for the few, let's say, and institutions for, for, for the rest, it is really important to, when setting up legislation, make sure that you start from this, uh, this, this rights for, for all approach that the PA is um, you know, an enforceable right. Otherwise you risk uh, to create different groups of, of disabled people which can uh, be played out against uh, each other. So um, I think that this is, this is a very important point that, that we should avoid um, creating these groups. Yeah, and, it's, and it is very important to stress here that independent living and personal assistance is for everyone because we hear a lot in uh, the counties, especially where we don't have it, like in Greece, for example. Uh, we hear uh, very often that they, not everyone can have personal assistance, not everyone can live independently. And the, you know, the parents, for example, the problem with Capca mentioned it. All these parents are one of the biggest, not enemies, because enemies is a heavy word, but parents are kind of the biggest, the groups that. Uh, believe less in, uh, in their children than the other ones. They don't believe that we that we can live independently. They are afraid that yeah we will die. We will, it will happen something to us. And if you have multiple uh, impairments, or if you are intellectual disabled, or if you have autism, this is even more difficult to convince a parent that you can live independently. And uh, but we know from Emil and from our experience that this is possible, this is totally possible. We have the experience, for example, of YAG, a Swedish organization. We, it's, I'm not sure, but I heard that maybe it's one of the biggest in the country. And they members are only people with a, a high support needs and multiple impairments. So imagine people like myself, I mean, in winter where they cannot do pretty much anything physically, but also they cannot speak and they don't have and they have also intellectual disability. And these people with all these uh, impairments, they live independently. They have, the, they, they, they don't live in institutions. And when we say it in our countries, in Greece, or I don't know, in Bulgaria, or in Poland, or in countries where they don't have independent living, that these people can live out of group homes of institutions, they don't believe us. They think it's not possible. But we say, look, it's good and it's happening. Not in other countries. You just need to have the knowledge and the willingness to to uh, to, 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 to succeed it. And I believe that if you can take a yes or a no from a person, then you can have choice and control at a certain level. And with this, you can yeah, you can do everything. And yeah, I always like to use the example of Stephen Hawking. 
Because if he, if he was living in my country, he would die probably 20 years earlier in an institution considered a plant, a, a useless person who cannot think or ca cannot do anything. But in the UK, with the right support and the right mentality, he was able to, to be a top scientist. So we see that it is possible if you have the right approach and the, and the right tools, and yeah, if you want, if you want to make it possible. What do you think, Frank? Yes, I think this is the the the, the really the, the the key also to have this this um, this right approach, and I think this also uh, points us to to another trend that 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 we see is that from I mean you you need to have the the, the right approach and to kind of have the 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 idea and the the belief also that everybody has the has the same rights and can access them, and here I think we see another trend in our in our uh, European replies to, to the survey which is about the disability assessment uh, because in several of the of the responses to to the survey we see that across the board basically that even uh, sweden but also spain france uh, estonia uh, slovenia you know people they give replies they say the assessment is still very much led by uh, professionals and indeed when you have assessments led by professionals you get professional results. Like they will say that this person has uh, several palsy, for instance, in, in my case. Um, however, you need to also acknowledge that if you have the same medical condition, you can have different needs and you can also experience different needs. So here again, it would be needed uh, in, in all the countries to really include NGOs in the assessment process and to also uh, offer peer support to people. Okay, th this happens in, in some cases, we, we see it in the, in, in the, in the country sheet of, of, of Sweden and I think also in, in Portugal, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that that there is this this option of of, of peer support, um, and I think this is really important because people need to be able to be uh, confident to to talk about uh, their needs as well when going into into an assessment uh, result. As as we see uh, when we ask about the the way the eligibility is done in the independent living survey, we see that that most of the time the the questions are, are still. Uh, framed it in a, in a in a wrong way for example you know the, there are people are asked are you able to do this or this um, independently and then this means that if you if you do not need any help for doing it like for instance are you able to 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 move uh, and then they mean are you able to move yourself without a wheelchair or without you know any any other help well actually if you turn the question around and say you know which kind of assistance do you need to do this or this this would be much this would be much better much more much more positively uh, phrased um other than that um i think that there is there is another um points to to be made here in terms of access to to the right support as you say Camille it, it is about also the the attitude but what we see um, is also a problem is basically even within the same country where you live can make uh, can make a huge difference um, so for instance um, we see in in France we see in in, in Italy in Spain uh, also in, in Belgium as I mentioned that uh, or, or even in the Netherlands that basically the the, the the budget or, or the, the the rules around PA are very local, so it, it can differ to, to living from one town to another town or one region or another region. If a person can access uh, personal assistance, this means that also in the responses to our independent living survey for one country, we got totally different information, and it was not because that these persons were not telling the truth. It was just because these persons were describing the situation in their uh, place of living. So of course this makes it very complicated for people to, to access PA or even to decide where and how to live within their own country. So I think here again it, we need to emphasize that while it is useful to, to have um, some um, local power to, to, to adjust to the needs that, that might be local, it is very important to also ensure like a, a, a national or at least a basic, I would say even European access to the rights of, of, of PA, that people are sure that they can access it wherever they, they live and that you don't have this uh, postcode lottery of, or 
also confusion that, that people experience when they try to find information uh, about PA uh, in their country. Uh, because as was said in the beginning, the, the, the whole purpose of, 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 of having the, the PA is to allow people to, to have control over their life and to make choices. And, and these choices should also be um, where, to, where to live. Um, so yeah, I think, um, yeah, so yeah, th these choices then uh, on, on where to live and, and also who then provides the, the support. And uh, when we talk, uh, yeah, before I go to, let's say, our next topic, uh, just one comment on what you already said. For example, when we say, well, about coming back a little bit to the assessment, me and my sister have the same disability. If you see the, the papers, we have the same diagnosis, but we don't have the same lifestyle, so we don't need the same PA. So you never can judge the PA on the diagnosis and on the medical model. You need to... We saw a good example, I think, in my opinion, it's a good example, again, in Slovenia, when you have the, the committee who is doing the assessment is from a, okay, from a doctor, from a person with social background, and also from the disability, disabled representative of, of an organization, of a, of a CIL. So the, it's a multi, multi, how you say, multi-sectorial committee, and then, then they have a questionnaire and they can, they can judge. And as you said, it's important to do it in the right and positive way and not in the way we saw yesterday in Switzerland when Peter said that people are crying after the assessment. This is, yeah, this is not the way it should be done probably. I mean, yeah, it's difficult. Now, uh, I would like a bit to stress and correct me, Frank, if I'm wrong, uh, the, the little bit also the, the thing, the matter of the service providers because it's something that it's, in, that it's important for many people. And yeah, I mean, meaning to have choice and control today, it's also to have the ability to choose who, who you want to have as a provider, if you want to have a provider. And uh, I think it's good to mention that we should not be scared of the providers, even though traditionally this is a truth, they were kind of on the other side because yeah, the interest, seem to be different but they they show that can be a support for independent living and for disabled people it can be even dpos and we see it in many countries that are the service providers and make the and they their mission is to make our life easier with practicalities and we see that many disabled people don't want to employ the people themselves because it's a lot of of paperwork or of i don't know difficult uh, yeah, uh, uh, obligations to do. So they go to a service provider to do the job for them. But what is important is that they, that the, the disabled people keep the, the, the control over the, over the whole process and that the service providers have the, the right perspective. So we need to work with them. We need to go work and have co productive approach. Um, the PA budget and direct payments can be a tool to do this and to give power to disabled people. We saw it also again yesterday and in other discussions uh, when talking to service provider or yeah, even if you do it by yourself, uh, which is not possible if you, if you are going through institutions. What is your opinion, Frank, on that? No, I, I definitely um, agree that, that um, the, the PA budget um, should be giving people choice as, as we said so this also means you know as wide as possible choices on how to use it uh, and we see uh, again in the independent living survey that is that is diverse among countries in some countries you can use your pa budget to um, employ people outside the disability care um, aspect and in other countries this is this is not possible and i think it, it should be possible and we shouldn't be as you say afraid of, of services as such, we should be afraid of, uh, or we should be, no, not afraid, it's not a good word here, it's on guard against the institutional um, takeover of these services. However, if um, mainstream services and, and community-based services are available, they should be accessible with the, the, with the PA budget as long as they are linked to, to disability support. Um, to use maybe a, a, a personal example here in, 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 in my um, 
case, I use my PA budget since I am here in my in my own uh, home in my own, in my own home now. I use the PA budget to have some um, home support from a, from a service that is providing general home support like uh, cleaning, shopping, help, and stuff. And I'm also using the the PA budget to um, employ somebody to uh, come and do my my garden. Not yet now, but when I have this uh, this garden uh, fixed, because it allows me to have a garden because otherwise I can't do it myself because I can't, um, you know, do the, uh, make sure that the flowers are, are kept in, in a nice uh, shape. Um, and uh, But thanks to the, the PA budget, I can ask this, this gardener to register as a support worker and then I can pay him with, with the PA uh, budget. So uh, basically he is um, still giving me the, the support to basically um, do things that I, that I cannot do. And he also allows me to then have this garden without needing to ask my family to help me uh, uh, in gardening. So I think giving this wide um, options to, to disabled people in how to use their budget is really, um, is really important. And, and I think uh, it should be, should be pushed for as, as much as possible. Um, of course, here, and I think, Emil, you have some information on this as well, is, is the, the always sensitive topic on, um, on education and, and training. Like, you know, if, if we allow everybody to be a PA, how do we, uh, how do we go about, uh, about certain, uh, certain criteria or certain degree that a person needs to have? Yeah, this is a hot, hot debate in many countries. I mean, I guess everywhere. And, and in many countries, if the, uh, if the if we should have professional PAs, if we should train them, if they should be, I don't know, if they should have a medical background or any social background or whatever, or if we should be able to, to hire whoever we want. Uh, in Greece, for example, when we had this working group on personal assistance, and I mean, in Greece, they have no idea about independent living till recently, so we are trying to build something very new. In, with our organizations, uh, we were very clear and we said no, we, they should not be trained because it would limit our choice, uh, our uh, yeah, ability to choose whoever we want to be our assistant. Because, you know, it, we said it should be a choice of the people. If you want to have a nurse, if you want to have, I don't know, uh, a social worker, a doctor or whatever, you are free to hire as PA a doctor. Maybe I want to have someone who just left the jail because I am socially sensitive and I want to give opportunity to socially uh, to marginalize people who don't get, who have stigma and don't and cannot work normally in the society. Or we know, for example, other people like, like Jamie, for example, who employ very often people who have refugee background because she wants to help these people. If we wanted all these people to be trained, then later we would be able to hire them or they would be able to, yeah, to be PAs for us. They would need to go to the training process and it would be, yeah, long and difficult. Uh, yeah, it would be, a, it would be kind of a difficult process. So yeah. I right. remember also other, sorry, yeah. I was, I want no, to go say ahead, sorry, I, I, will, I will tell later, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I wanted to say that I remember other speaking in our conference, uh, in our meeting, like, uh, I don't know, one month or two months ago, two months ago, Kapka was also there. And he said that we should train disabled people on how to train the, their assistants and not the assistants. And yeah, Frank, you wanted to say something. No, I just wanted to, but it's again a, a personal example. So sorry if I give too much of them, but um, the, I think you are, you are absolutely correct that uh, in terms of training, it is, it is crucial to to keep the the freedom to choose with the person, because otherwise you um, limit the, the 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 access the access to PAs. I think one of the greatest difficulties that I as a PA user uh, see is that my PA budget is is not sufficient to to give somebody a half time or full time contract. So I I work on week contracts or day contracts, which means that most of the time they are students that are um, my PAs because they are willing to, to do so. Uh, and when I was a student uh, in, in, um, in political science uh, some, some time ago, uh, I needed a PA to, to be with me in the classes to take notes if my classes were longer than three hours. Um, so basically I needed somebody that could uh, take notes fast 
and was interested in political science because the person, you know, had to stay awake <laughs> for the entire uh, class. So basically, the, for the rest, I did not have any um, um, uh, degrees or something that I needed. Um, so it, it was good that it was uh, allowed. And I think also in, in, in Flanders now, they are starting to talk a bit about, you know, should we start uh, um, education for being a PA? which I think is a dangerous uh, development because rather than, you know, giving more choice to, to people, they kind of basically add PA as being a specialization for, for nurses and, and medical workers, not, not for people who are necessarily uh, wanting the uh, aware of, of the social model or, or the CRPD. So I think it, it's always more dangerous to, to put, um, to put degrees, uh, to put degrees there. Um, and then the, this also brings us to the, uh, to, to the issue of, of, of family members, I guess, which, which we already talked about. Um, maybe Camille, I can start a bit here and uh, then we, I hand over to you because I think I'm going to say something, uh, something sensitive in the way that um, I do employ uh, family members as, as PAs um, re regularly. Uh, and there are some, some reasons for this. Um, first of all, uh, as I said, uh, I don't have the, the opportunity to offer people full-time contracts. So family members are, are flexible. When I needed to travel for Enil before COVID, it was sometimes my only option to then go with, with a family member, but at least um, we could make clear arrangement because there, there was this, uh, this payment. Uh, another thing for flexibility is, is for instance, uh, when I need VA on Sunday, I have my sister or um, I pay my, my mother to do the bookkeeping for my PA, just because I don't want to think about it. And uh, we could make a clear arrangement that, you know, um, for, from the moment that she was my PA, I would pay her and I would not be sitting next to her doing it. You know, that, the, you know, she was kind of the, the bookkeeping service that I could also hire with, uh, with an NGO, but I would prefer my, my mother because I trust her more than, than an NGO. So I think um, giving the, the right um, kind of, of support to people and giving the, the sufficient budget to make sure that it's both a choice for the family and the, uh, and the disabled user, uh, then it, it is possible to allow this, uh, maybe for a certain percentage. Uh, but I do think that the choice should be, should be kept um, because it is still a choice that that can be a, a legitimate choice if, if it is a choice for both uh, for both parties um, but however um, uh, yeah feel free to, to disagree with me also in, in the chat and also maybe you Camille because I know in Greece you are going the the other way a bit <laughs> yeah and uh, when we have now the discussion about the Greek legislation well and we were discussing if the family should be uh, members of uh, should be PAs, if the family members should be PAs. Uh, my organization and me myself said that, no, we don't agree with that because it is what Kapka said. It's, it's about the, that if you, it's just getting in more income to the family, but you are not becoming more independent. I understand what happens in, in Belgium, as you said, or, or Adolf in the past, Adolf in the past said that in Sweden, it is possible. But I think it's also the thing of mentality and how prepared is the society. So when you start a new, I think that when you start a new legislation and a new movement, a new PA is, and you will expect people to have personal assistance for the first time, you need to have it more strict because uh, especially in the north of, uh, in the south of Europe, we have a very big tradition of family and of family, uh, and you know of the protection and of everything and of the and how we are and of the bond with our family so it would be very difficult to to move away from the families if it's not if it's not in the law people will not feel even the disabled people will not feel safe or you know confident to to do it so i agree with that i think that it depends on the system and on the culture of the country so for example in countries like greece like bulgaria like, I don't know, maybe Portugal and Balkan countries and, you know, these kind of things. Yeah, it's more difficult, but when the society is ready and, you know, the, the, the country is different, 
like in the north, like in Belgium, like in Scandinavia, yes, a certain percentage to the families is, is also part of the choice and control of the disabled people. But in that case, the disabled people are empowered enough to do it. That's, uh, that is what I think. Right. Yeah, I, I think that, that this is this is this is also this question of society and, and, and being ready as we said. But I know that we have we, we don't have time um, anymore. <laughs> um, but maybe I can um, if, if it's still possible and if it's not then stop me. Um, but to, to kind of wrap up these trends in Europe that we that we did, maybe I can talk a bit about uh, EU uh, in general. Um, because I think this is also important to, to understand uh, what we see from the Independent Living Survey, uh, that many of the pilot projects of PA, they, they started with um, European funds. And uh, I think what is important to understand about the, the EU um, and about uh, maybe the upcoming European disability strategy and, and other things is that you, you have to imagine the EU as, as, as a super slow, combination of national problems coming together and having to make one document uh, out of this. Um, so I will be very quick, but just to say that uh, if you want to, to use European legislation or European documents to you know, push for PA in your country, this, this is possible. You can, you can go for the uh, philosophical documents, the, the objectives, because lots of years uh, of advocacy for independent living in the EU did, did lead to the word independent living and the word PA being included in those documents. Um, and it can be good to, to set up pilots. However, you should not be expecting, and then this I think is very important, the EU to do um, monitoring of, of if it's going into the right direction because European institutions, they are afraid of, of member states in this regard. They don't want to, to go against them. We see it now with, with uh, the rule of law in, in Poland and, and, and Hungary. We, we see it in, in, uh, in many cases where INIL has done complaints about misuse of funds that the, the, the commission or the, you know, to really go against is, is tricky. So I would say for inspiration, for pushing, yes, but for real implementation, it is, it is still the national level, which is, which is very important. And uh, maybe my, my um, uh, final thing, or, or would you like still to add something, Camille, uh, to, to what I we... Think we... I think we covered so everything. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, so just to say that on 10 December, we will, we will present the Independent Living Survey in full, um, uh, also in a webinar. And now I will shut up. So, so sorry, George. <laughs> Obrigado. Uh, foi uma conversa animada e, e continuávamos agora aqui durante uma série de horas, mas uh, vamos ter que uh, passar agora ao, às perguntas que o público está ainda a assistir e quer fazer. Eu, eu, eu pegava nesta questão. Are we are very happy to answer. There is any question? Yes. Uh, eu gostava. Sim, sim. Uh, eu, eu teria aqui, pegava nesta questão da, da Europa e como a Enil trabalha a nível europeu, uh, para pôr uh, duas questões. Uma que se prende com a utilização dos fundos comunitários, uh, saber se há alguma informação sobre o novo quadro de apoio, se contempla a aplicação de fundos para a vida independente, eu devo dizer que, na minha opinião, é bom que existam fundos, claro, mas que a vida independente em cada país deveria ser financiada pelo próprio Orçamento de Estado Nacional, porque nós nunca sabemos se de quadro comunitário em quadro comunitário se há alterações na aprovação de fundos, mas era uma curiosidade saber se neste momento se está a pensar ou não na atribuição de fundos para a implementação da vida independente a nível dos vários países europeus. Porque há grande discussão neste momento sobre a aplicação de fundos para a renovação, a ampliação de instituições residenciais e eu penso que a haver 
alguma aplicação de fundos nesse sentido, deveria haver um budget muito maior para a vida independente do que para a renovação ou ampliação ou construção de novas instituições residenciais. Por outro lado, também gostava de saber, neste momento está a seguir o processo de elaboração da Estratégia Europeia para a Deficiência e se, qual será o peso que terá dessa estratégia a questão da vida independente? So, I think that the plan Q would be more suitable to answer both questions. Uh, what I want to bring here is that we discussed it a bit before the webinar and we, and we said that you cannot base your independent living, your national independent living scheme on the EU funds forever because yeah, the EU is not going to pay this forever. I mean, EU is, is going to help you with pilot projects or with the start of this, but you have then to probably, yeah, to, to also use the, the national council to make it more stable and more, to more feasible. But yeah, I will leave the plan with the details for both this and this disability strategy since he's working on that. Frank, can you unmute? Someone needs to unmute Frank. doesn't have the permission but okay okay now it works thanks uh, and i'm sorry that we are causing these technical difficulties by having two people <laughs> talking uh, but uh, yes no i i think uh, uh, jorge or i think if you um, if you asked the, the question you already covered much of the of the responses because uh, indeed as, as camille said the eu can be good to set up a pilot for va and um, there is some debate in in the eu and there is some some you know there are some documents that are really pushing for what is then called the transition to community based uh, services and pa is included uh, among those so this is the, the disability rights uh, side of the coin like the disability unit and those documents but on the other hand you have uh, European projects on, on environment, which is now very hot, hot topic, like uh, the, the Green Deal, etc. And one of the um, parts of this Green Deal is to renovate as much as possible old buildings to make them more energy efficient. Um, but of course, what is, is the case is that in many countries, institutions are old buildings, so they need them to be renovated to become more energy efficient. They are very easy targets for governments to, to invest in. And I think this is a real danger that on the one hand, you say we want community-based services, we want PA. On the other hand, we say we give money to renovate old buildings, which you know do not exclude explicitly institutions. And we have made this point. And of course, when we make it, the commission, they say, ah, yes, we will you know, be sure that it's not invested in institutions. But as, as Kapka said, we saw in, in Bulgaria and we saw in Romania and we saw in Portugal uh, also, and you know, uh, we, we saw that they still do it, you know, the, the investments are still being used in, in institutions. And what is the reason for this is that we have a different idea of what institutions is. The commission say, ah, yes, if it's, if it's nicer and smaller, it's not an institution. Well, of course, this is not true because it's against the, the, the CRPD and, and general comment uh, number five, as we also made clear. But I think this clearly indicates to, to the point that Yes, you can use the EU to a certain extent, but the EU itself is going in a lot of different directions and there is no general um, coordination to make sure that all initiatives goes towards human rights implementation. Like for, for the DG environment and, and Green Deal, renovations is more important than human rights. And they have a new um, tool which is called the resilient and recovery funds to recover after COVID, which is then of the finance ministers, which again asks people to make green investments. So again, here there is the same risk of investing in, in, in better institutions. And uh, as you say, the disability strategy should to some extent maybe, you know, bridge this and, 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 and take care of the coordination. But also here we see that the disability strategy is very narrowly focused okay they are still 
drafting it and there is always hope that it will be um, you know more widely focused more ambitionally focused but it, it focuses very much on you know getting people I into employment and of course having a decent standard of living and focusing on on, on disability related things but it does not say that this also means that all other European initiatives should not go against these objectives. So again, the disability strategy stays very much within disability. And um, I think this is the, this is the, the, the weakness of, of, of EU as well, that similar to, to national governments, they, they keep seeing disability as something special rather than as, as, as human rights. And now I talked very long, very much, so I will I will stop. But I can talk about this for a long time. So if, if you want to talk after more, then this is also uh, possible. <laughs> However, to give a very close to a positive note, just a, just a sentence, we can say that it was very positive received from Emil that the disability strategy had clear indication on independent living yes. and personal assistance, which is something very positive. Yes, that's true. So advocacy does lead to um, a change of, of wording and a slow pushing of an idea, which, which, is, which is the case. Other, other questions? I try to read also in the, in the chat. Sandrina, we Sandrina to activate the sound and can speak, Jorge. Oi. Sandrina? Hello? Hello? Uh... Sandrina? Olá. Pode falar. Uh, I would like to ask Frank, uh, you said that in Belgium uh, it was possible for you to hire your own family to help you. Maybe it is possible in, in Belgium because you don't live with them. They don't need that money to, to survive like in many other countries, like in Bulgaria or Portugal. Is it that uh, is it the case in Belgium? Yes, that, that's a good a good question. And and uh, I yeah, maybe this should have been even more clear in my in my intervention as well. Yes, this is exactly why it is working. Because um you know, like I said, it, it's a choice for my family. They, they don't have to do it. They can say, we don't want to do it and, and this is fine. It, it's a choice for, for them and it's a choice for me. I can say, you know, uh, next week and tomorrow, this is no longer needed. It is no longer, uh, I don't no longer want this in, in my current situation. We stop the contract. And I know that this will not have negative consequences for my family. They will still have sufficient uh, income, uh, they will still have, you know, uh, decent uh, living because the, the, the PA money or the, or the, or the kind of the, the, the money that I pay them to, to, to work for me as PA is only on top a few hours of their uh, day job. For the rest, this PA budget allows me to take a lot of the, the support tasks uh, away from them so that their own career development or own income is, is, is not dependent on, on my PA. So I think if in order for it to work indeed, you need to have a sufficiently high um, PA budget to, to ensure that you, know, you can have both family members if this is the wish and preference and support workers from the open labor market together. And you need to have it from a you know early uh, age, as was the case with me. I had it from uh, 12 years old. The 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 PA, no, 13 years old. The the PA budget, which also allowed my, my family members to to continue to develop their um, professional careers and and to make sure that that my income or my PA income did not, you know, they were not dependent on it. Uh, in the same way as I, I am not dependent on them to to offer the to 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 offer me support, so I think this is a really great point and, and a good point that yes it it works but it only works if you have the, this balance this this uh, this uh, equilibrium between choice of family members and choice of 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 user. 
and the right amount of empowerment, no? Yes, ah, yes. Also, this that yes, indeed. Um, the fact that I was um, well had access to uh, two uh, NGOs, two organizations who could give me information on how to manage uh, PA and you know what are my options, what are my choices. So it was not only my my family who would give me information about how to use the PA. It was also uh, Ich Rep as an NGO and then Ona van Kleven as an NGO who gave this this information. So, um, you know, my information uh, was also available and was also provided to me by other disabled people who were using uh, PA. So in this case, this is indeed, Camille, another uh, important point. Yes. Is this answering your question or totally not? <laughs> Yes, yes, uh, it, okay. it is exactly what uh, what I thought it would uh, would be possible in other countries. Here, it, it is difficult because we still live in our parents' house, so many of us have to share the money with them. So that's that's why many of them don't even want the PA in, uh, at home because they they would lose the money the government gives them. So that's why it's very difficult to to get a PA and to expand the project, I think. Uh, but I, I wanted to ask you something else. Uh, in Belgium or in the, in Greece, what kind of chores does the PA uh, do? What do they do exactly? Well, in Greece, in Greece, we don't have yet a legislation. We don't have personal assistance yet. So we don't have a regulation what they do or what they don't. We are discussing like this. A few months ago, we discussed it. You know, we did a working group and we discussed the very basics. And we said that they have to be our ext the extension of our arms, our legs, our, I don't know, eyes if we don't see. It depends. So, it's still not clear what will happen in Greece. Of course, we we want to to be sure that they will be safe and will not do something which is not legally okay. They would will probably end up with uh, with a legislation which will say that they they will be able to do what we would be able to do if we were not disabled. But that's a guess, so I would be able to answer when we have the actual legislation. But Frank, I think, can say more about his. Um, I think I, I can answer this and maybe also the question of, of budget control that just popped up in the chat from Diogo because they are um, related. Um, I think, Emil, you gave a good, um, you gave a good um, description in, in the sense that um, the Belgian legislation has, has two kind of criteria. It, it needs to be legal, what you are doing, and it needs to be related to your uh, support, so to, to be your arms and legs and eyes and stuff like this. I so, cannot ask for marijuana, right? What? I cannot ask him for marijuana. No, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, you cannot ask him for marijuana, but you, you can ask him for um, the legal amount of, um, of, um, of cannabis in some ways. Uh, but this is a discussion that is probably not uh, <laughs> the right place uh, here. Uh, because the, the legislation um, the, the first in, in many countries, of course. Uh, so, um, no, I think as long as, as I can, can, can prove that it's related to my support needs, like I say, the, the, the person coming to do my garden or helping me in the house, uh, it doesn't need to be a, a, sp a special service, it just needs to be a person. And if I can say that uh, because of my, my support needs, I need this person to do uh, did this work, then it's fine. Uh, and of course, it needs to be it needs to be legal. So yes, I cannot ask a person to get me me marijuana. Well, I can ask it, and the person can can do it. But if the person is caught, then both my PA and myself we are going to to face uh, police uh, charges because it, it's not allowed. Um, and uh, how how then do I need to to put this in the budget? How is the budget controlled? Uh, this is a, also a, a good question. So for for every euro I, I spend, uh, so, so to say, in in the, the PA, I need to have um, a contract or um, 
an agreement to, to back it. So if I hired the, uh, the, the PA f to travel for me, really to, to assist me in traveling, I have a contract with this person pointing out what are the tasks, what is the time. If I have the gardener, I, I have a contract with this guy uh, pointing out what are his tasks, what, what, what is the time he is coming, what, what he can do, what, what he cannot uh, do. Um, so, and if I, for instance, go to, to, the, to the house help service, I have a, a, an, an agreement with them, which is, which is drafted by them, but signed by me, um, that, that says um, when the, the house help is, is coming to, to my house. Um, and every, uh, well, I need to send, um, so four times a year, you, I need to send all these documents to the agency for disability, and then the agency for disability will check if this fits my needs assessment. If it does, then they um, transfer the money. And uh, the way this works is that you get, um, well, my budget um, is 20,000 euros a year, roughly. And I get 5,000 euros in the beginning of the year. And then when I submit uh, costs, they will see if it's still within the 5,000 euros or, or not, and then kind of compensate the difference before the next quarter starts. So that I don't have to upfront money, but only access money um, when, when I get justification uh, from it. Um, I don't know if that was clear enough, Diogo, <laughs> and also um, Sandrine to, to, to your questions. Uh, maybe for this, the, 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 the thing I can still add uh, on, on families and, and contracts, um, there is a, a special contract for, for family members, uh, which indeed uh, indicates that um, family members cannot, um, well, it, it's double, like it still says that the family connection exists, but it also says, and it clarifies in the contract, that uh, the PA money cannot be used by the family to support family budget, or that it alters the, the kind of hierarchy position. Like that while I am still a, a son by law, for, for some moments I will be, um, you know, boss. <laughs> yeah, um, so, so this is also stipulated in, in contracts with, with family members. They, they have a special um, contract, so it, it could be good to, to, to mention. Uh, to mention this. Bom, eu tenho, tenho muita pena, mas vou ter que uh, encerrar o dia de hoje.